put a... You mean well, the actually, high, high parts for the orange? Uh, uh, Throwing out a culture um, vulture? Just that. Just a, so if you mute the... Oh, so right. Mute it, those, I kind of got them panned. Yeah, yeah. I'm like... Just adds them and, some yeah, real, yeah, yeah, real yeah, girth the, to the it, which I really love. Hi, I'm Jim Kaufman. We're in my studio in Santa Monica, California. Uh, it's been awesome to record Helmet here. When I was a little kid, I was maybe 21 or 22 years old, I met um, Charlie Clouser. Uh, Charlie produced my band uh, and we started working together. Charlie co-produced Size Matters, um, which is where I met Paige. Uh, I was basically the assistant on that record. I got uh, a lot of sandwiches, ham and cheese sandwiches, uh, at like 5 p.m. driving down Beechwood Canyon. So I met Paige, you know, a few weeks probably before going into Cello, which is now East West Studio A, to record Size Matters. And I remember it was such a cool, it was such a cool record. Like I was such a, I was a little kid, and these guys are like, you know, my 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 icons. Like I had posters of these dudes on my walls when I was growing up and now I'm sitting in a room with them. And, and it kind of shaped me for, for who I am. At the time I was an artist, I was in a band and, you know, production stuff was, you know, something I was interested in. You know, making Left, you know, with when you're, when you're recording a band like Helmet, that's like this killer live band. Uh, my goal from the jump was to be able to try to capture as much of the energy that Helmet brings to a live show. Um, on a recording because it's it's some insight into once the track itself is done um, I'm not done you know because I have to I haven't done my solos and I haven't done all the backing vocals you know there's a lead vocal and the, the you know uh, two guitars bass and drums are done then I have my overdubs parts so I developed that stuff here that's just what the is the great thing about having a little home studio um, um, yeah, so the whole cul-de-sac up here can hear me when I'm singing and working out these out these parts. But it's just it's just really fun. It's just fun. It, like I, once I get the stuff uh, done, the arrangement, the, you know, I'll send it to Jim and uh, Ryan and, and Mark as well, and he'll go, they'll go through and they'll edit stuff or do what they need to do, and and uh, they make sense of my mess. So it's it's kind of just fun for me. I'm like Jackson Pollock, like splattering paint up against the canvas. It's like, yeah, that's pretty cool, you know. And, and if if half of it gets on the album, I'm I'm usually pretty happy, you know. Uh, you know, for me, like nailing that helmet snare was super important. So we took some time, um, like the day before we started recording, and Kyle came in, um, and Sahir, the guy that made the snare drum, and and we tuned the kit up. Uh, so. We got the right drum tone, and I think that set the tone for the record. I mean, it was uh, it was good. It was just a little. It was we did a lot of uh, more writing in the studio than I we've done in the past. It turned out great. I'm I'm really stoked with how it all how it's all come out. You know, it's like I don't have a lot of information when we start. It's, it's just like I don't really know what the vocal, what Paige is doing. So when I hear it, it's all I hear everybody's parts in. I'm like, wow, it sounds like a totally different song from when I when I was doing my parts and that's that's kind of the fun part. We loaded Kyle's drum kit in here um, into my drum room which is right over there. He has this beautiful Tama. Um, we used a Masters of Maple snare drum. Kyle has this like amazing way of like he's like super in it but it also kind of feels like he's falling down the stairs at, at any moment like he's just wild and and like and and kind of out of control but it's so controlled in an out of control way. Um, and so just letting him kind of do his thing and, and, and capturing that um, was, was, was really important. And once we had the drums, the record felt like it just kind of fell together. We've been playing together for so long now. We just have such a, we're such a locked in vibe, you know, and, and I like, it was really important to me, even like guitar wise. Could I play all the guitars? Sure. But what Dan brings is a completely, you know, a di not completely different, but a, uh, a sound and a feel that we gel together and it sounds a lot bigger and a lot uh, just better with uh, with two musical personalities. Together we've figured it out over the years, you know, changing my amp and figuring out different tubes and different pickups and things until we kind of had it to where it worked together very well. And so that's a big part of it and all the time we have, you know, invested already mm -hmm. and at different 
guitar too. Right. Les Paul Gotta has a certain Paul. warmth to it. For sure. Mixed with ESP. And it just kind of is a nice, it's a nice mix. Yeah, the label is, they've been amazing. They've, uh, like they've been so enthusiastic and fired up, but they, everybody was kind of excited because it's been a while since we did a record, right? So we, seven years. yeah, seven years. And so we, um, we knew we had Australia and New Zealand coming up, which we had rebooked for the fourth time. Finally was happening. But every said, uh, new booking agent said, well, you need an album if you're gonna tour, you know, the US, so we did. So we just started, you know, we just dug right in and said, Dan has a really cool space in Glassell Park. And um, we just kind of started going in. I started sketching, you know, riffs and lyrics and I, I keep copious notes anyway. I write a lot of stuff down as far as lyrical ideas. So I'm not just going in empty handed. And Dave, you know, lives in New York, so he has a great engineer he works out out there with being like, the odd man out you know it sometimes it makes more sense for me to do my parts there and like Paige said i got a great friend joe sincata who i've been working with for years done a lot of albums with him he's an excellent engineer we have a shorthand so we work fast together and when it comes to the helmet stuff he has and does just drop what he's doing i'm like i know this is like last minute dude but we got these songs we got to get them done he's like all right, let's do it. And they just send me roughs and I do my homework. I just go in and I, I just give it my best, but they make it so easy because like you said, the chemistry is, is so good that even when I'm in Long Island, on Long Island, <laughs> playing in a, in a studio 3,000 miles away and these guys aren't there, I still feel like I'm playing with them. Um, when I mixed, uh, I felt like um, there wasn't a lot to do. Uh, because we kind of, you know, we, we really focused on getting the tones right on the way in and getting the performances, and I just kind of had to stay out of its way, um, and uh, and then you know utilizing the right the right gear, making sure that the you know the right mics and preamps. Um, and then the double as well, not not too much of a double happening, but yeah. I definitely have some in there. I'm also using like an ADT, which is like the automatic doubling. Tracking thing, like oh, the cool. Beatles vibe. Yeah, yeah. Um, and in the choruses, I bring that, I, I fade that up every chorus, except for the last chorus. So it's just kind of gaining velocity as the chorus comes. Oh, comes cool. Uh, and then the last chorus is just full blown. Yeah. And then when we had everything in the box, routing it through my summing mixer, you know, getting some Neve preamps back in, um, using this DW firm. Uh, EQ, which was, uh, you know, super helpful. And that's really it. There's not a lot of processing on it. Um, and I think that really helps it feel live and, and feel like it's, a, it's really breathing, it's alive, it's its own thing. I'm really happy with it.